Hey guys, Tyro here, bringing you a 3v3 today. We are on Erbrock Station, playing a few days spawning in the left or the north. We have Red Terror as the Soviets, who has Soviet Reserve Army, Soviet Combined Arms Army, and Guard Motor Coordination. Maybe we're going to see a howitzer from him. Two howitzer commanders in there. Dr. Durlewanger as the US forces who has heavy cavalry, armor company and tactical support and finally Stern Panther as the Brits who has mobile assault special weapons and vanguard we see a rush for the garrison typical on Erebrot facing off against them we have Deus Ex Ender as OKW okay, and as low as breakthrough fortifications and scavenge Yamaru, also OKW, okay, who has Firestorm, Breakthrough, and Scavenge. And finally, No Shame, also OKW, okay, Fortifications, Elite Armor, and Scavenge. Bit of Scavenge going on in these OKW okay, teams. Uh, ranks, this is the rank 10 Axis versus the rank 18 Allies, arranged team 3s. So a pretty highly ranked match, pretty uh, closely matched as well. Not that many teams play uh, arranged 3s though. So Axis off to uh, not that strong at start considering they've got Stern Pioneers on honestly to perform quite well on this map. But I still get that all important garrison they meant they won that race. Also kind of surprised not to see uh, Kubel play from at least one of the Axis players. Could really help secure some uh, early territory here. Doesn't look like this push of the rifleman's going to go too well. A lot of squads here for Yamaru is going to shut that down quite handily. Could even get a wipe here. Yep, there it goes. Oh, could get a wipe here in return. Now, Pino's not that good firing on the move. Oh, max range gets the job done. I doubted them, but. Prove me wrong. Interesting to see he goes for a sweep on his combat engineers. Probably to cut, yeah, cut the wire. Reinforced wire. Otherwise you would really want a flamethrower on this. A lot of garrisons, a lot of heavy cover. Very good for a flamethrower. And that's what we're seeing from Yamaru. He's making a second squad of Stern Pioneers as well. Remember, Stern Pioneers take a long time to build. Look how slow it, they are building. Wiring the squad in. Oh no! You can't get out of that door, right? Can you? Can you not? I don't know. I don't, I don't use. I vetoed this map, I haven't played it on a, for a while. Either way, it looks like that squad's going to go down there because of that wire. Cheeky maneuver there by Red Terror. And there's the first mortar pit. That is bad news for the Axis. Very bad news indeed. They have really got off to a poor start this game. Tech structures for the Axis, we've got one med base there, one uh, mech base going on right now, third truck on the way. 
Probably going to see Captain from Dirly Wang, I'd imagine. He turn, doesn't really have much of a place in these team games, these big team games. Can't get enough utility out of the light vehicles. And you really need access to the anti tank guns. A lot of engagements going on. Oh god. What if it's already racking up a lot of damage? Nearly get one. Barely been on the field for 30 seconds, it feels like. Not only got two kills, but he's been landing some massively damaging hits, causing you know, a lot of soft retreats. A lot of lost territory for the Axis. Using some ghost sandbags there to try to block the penal's entry. Sneaky. Keeping them inside the uh inside that range. Ten range, otherwise those ghosts would disappear. It's broken by the penals, but I think he wants one more squad to assault that squad with. Oh he's worried he's gonna lose the engagement. Tier three going down for red tier and now. Big old push, Yamaru coming back out onto the field. He's got his med base down over here. No forward retreat point for him yet, but imagine playing this kind of strategy. He will be going for a forward retreat point. Senior grenade goes onto the fighting position. Yeah, should cancel that upgrade, which he did. Panther is going to take care of that quite handily. Flamethrower is not targeting that squad though. Can use attack ground on it, I believe, however. Big old push from Red Terror, all those penals, and it's got to take down the ISG quite easily. Probably not going to be able to make it away with the ISG, but certainly on a setback, no shame. Oh, but he could lose his squad on retreat. Depends on the Sturm Pioneers if they switch targets. Yeah, nice. So he's going to get the wipe there. And Axis now, you know, they've got their forward retreat point. Their soft retreat points there. Not losing as much ground every time they have to retreat. And it's starting to make a bit more of an impact on the map control starting to not lose that game so badly do see a fuel cache down for red terror and he's also gone for reserve army gives him access to the very strong rapid conscription of course one of my favorite abilities However, he's got to be careful making a howitzer because the, uh, the Stuka artillery strike from this is very good at taking down howitzers. However, the Axe is probably going to have trouble getting line of sight because none of them has uh, special operations equipped, so no artillery flares for the Axis. Very surprising to see no special operations. So it's so important for team games, giving you that ex excellent line of sight. Oh, nasty gammon bomb there, takes down the NG34, looks like that could even be stolen here. That of course means we're probably going to see some land mattress action very soon. Nexus have lost the ground once again. Walking Stuka straight away from Dasix Endy. He's got to be careful this doesn't get found by the Stuart though. Enemy threatening a capture point. Of 
So this one targeting the garrison. Gets out of there in the nick of time with this machine gun, but garrison's still standing. A lot of extremely strong garrisons on this map. Church very strong, this one's very strong, this one's very strong. Lots of windows as well. Big push, trying to take down this mortar pit once and for all. It's on brace, so it's not taking much damage, but it's about to wear off. So one squad there for repairs is taking damage from the senior grenade, perhaps with a few ISG shells. Follow up, there it goes. Mortar pit down, so the Axe has got to be happy about that. It's a big win for them. No weapon upgrades yet from uh, Dr. Derlywanger. So these riflemen starting to drop off in effectiveness. You really need those weapon upgrades. And it's kind of important to get the weapon upgrades before you get your foot retreat point because it can be a bit harder to sort that out later on in the game. Taking time to you know retreat one squad and reactivate and deactivate your foot retreat point. Nice for kitten usage there, forcing away the Stuart. Flamethrowers coming in for both teams. Forcing squads out of buildings. But the Axis once again just struggling to hold on to their lone VP right now. So Stuka should be about cooled down, yes. They, you you kind of develop the sixth sense for when these things are ready to fire again. Yes. Stuka is ready to go. Oh, he's got a body block his own squad there. In comes Stuka now. Targeting these team weapons, perhaps. The garrison again. It's a pretty good hit on the mortar team. Um, not the mortar team, the machine gun team as well. Gets him quite close to... Well, about two-thirds of the way to Vet 2. Or Vet 1, rather. But the Allies are keeping that VP pressure on. He's just got to be careful about that. Look at this push from the Axis. Blob of all blobs. What can you do about this? No suppression on this side, and even then you probably need two Vickers facing this way to try and stop a blob this large. They are uh, just finding their way through. Here goes the Vickers, suppressing one squad. Suppressing another one. Looks like they kind of broke off into two branches. Here goes that Vickers. Oh, demo charge. Squad down. Just getting a mine down on the VP themselves. They really need those VPs. They're quite far behind. Desix Ender has selected a commander going for fortifications. We'll open up maybe putting down some S mines on this VP, which will really help them in that uh, VP capture game. These mines take quite a long time to clear. Well, the price quite effective at holding on to VPs. Do we have any uh, artillery strikes? No, nothing to counter a LFH as well. So an LFH could actually be very, very strong this game. Perhaps he's going to go all in on the artillery, having already gone for the walking Stuka. Sure, what he's targeting with that barrage. Looks like he got some. Here and see maybe from damaging the fuel cache. Just got interrupted there, sorry about that. Oh, 
Oh, to Chushu. Killing Strafe. Shuts down that push somewhat for Yamaru, but you know, they've got these four retreat points, so they don't have that far to go. Just definitely helping out the Axis big time here in the map control situation. Now we've got a Vickers on this side. Yeah, all those squads are going to retreat back for healing. All quite low. Could lose a lot of manpower there if you continue to push. Oh, he runs over that mine, that Shumon we saw being planted over there. There's a Rakitin. It's one hit on, but it's not going to finish the job. But it definitely slows down the progress of that Centaur. These kind of anti-infantry tanks really need them to make a big impact straight away. Smoke to cover his allies' retreat. Nice teamwork. The Axis have definitely stabilized. The VP is getting a lot closer even now. But as you can see, just one machine gun by itself, not enough to keep back these Axis blobs. We need two machine guns facing the same direction, but that's very vulnerable to the Walking Stuka. Here comes the walking Stuka, a monster hit there, does heaps of damage to both the vehicles and clears out that mortar team. It's probably a bucket load of virency now for him. Yeah, almost V2 after that barrage. Bunker going down on the VP now as well. Sometimes forgotten feature of fortifications. So this is where the rocket artillery war starts to come in. Or just the overall artillery war. Because they battle it out for these VPs. Trenches going down in the center. Nexus do have the edge here, they don't have as far to retreat. Here comes the Katusha Barrage. Not getting uh, many lucky hits there. Oh, we might have even got a bit of friendly fire. Friendly fire on uh, rocket artillery is pr pretty low. Well, not the uh, walking Stuka, that's actually quite high. I think on uh, most other rocket artillery it's 25% friendly fire, so... Uh oh! Oh, and there's the Calliope. No, that's not the Calliope. But it could quite easily be the Calliope. It's the uh, land mattress. Going to work. Artillery coming in. Oh, every direction. Second Katusha. Trench goes down to the walking Stuka. And uh, we're starting to get Cratersville. Look at all these craters in the center. It's going to become like that probably across almost the entire map with the amount of rocket artillery we're going to see from both sides. We also have a ML20. I didn't even mention this. Red tear. I mean, by said it's quite uh, quite easy to kill that with the uh, artillery, the Stuka artillery from this, but they'd have to get line of sight and they don't have the artillery flares, so it could be actually quite a struggle. Six in there. What's he spending his manpower on? Oh, he's got an LFH now going up as well. I thinking his manpower is quite low. VP battle rages on. Two Scots. 
And uh, honestly, the Allies anti-tank is not that strong right now. Like, yeah, a couple anti-tank guns, but... Not, not that powerful. Oh, there's the Sturm Tiger. He's going to land a shot on mid. A lot of people's coming into the middle. Ooh, doesn't quite get a wipe. Eight models down, yeah. So a decent opening shot there. If he got that wipe, I'm sure he would have been happy, but... Just if he delayed it just a split second longer, then his squads came in. Probably would have done a bit more damage. Nice attempt, though. They will perform very well on this map. Can shoot through the shot blockers. Yeah. Uh oh, Stuart gonna go down to the Yak Panzer? No, it goes down to the Rakitin instead. Here comes some artillery there. This map Stuka. Rocket artillery coming in every direction. The Axis have been reasonably conservative though with their battle group HQ, so they're not in the line of fire of the rocket artillery as of yet. When did this get decreased? Did that go down to the alley fetch perhaps? Yeah, it looks like the alley fetch is facing towards the ML20, so that's how they're going to try to take care of the ML20, just barrage it with the alley fetch, which is it. Is definitely better in the artillery versus artillery fight. It's got more shells, slightly better scatter, I believe. And uh, eventually we'll get access to the counter barrage, which is very strong as well at countering artillery. No, it's artillery this time not targeting the MR20. Targeting this region. C85 wants to stay in there, try and knock out that bunker, open up this BP for the capture, but it's forced away by the Rakitans. Against Tim Tiger Rocket, not quite on target, it's quite a few kills. I think there's five kills there, but you really want to be getting wiped with the Tim Tiger. X are suffering a lot of bleed to all this rocket artillery, though. Now the ML20 pitching in trying to take down the battle group HQ. Look at the scatter, though. One rocket lands, oh, one shell lands there, one shell lands over here. What happens if you fire max range, no line of sight, huge scatter on the shells. Oh, Firing back at the ML20, hoping to get lucky. Battle for this VP wages on, but they can't cap it when that bunker's still up. History 85 finally takes it down. Got the Scots there on tap, trying to lead these squads. Oh, that rocket artillery! That was a huge barrage! The Calliope Alpha Strike. 13 kills. I'm pretty sure that was all in that barrage. That was nasty. Wow, that just step back yeah look at Yamaru he's got nothing left after that he's building himself a panther but that was a crushing blow more rocket artillery it's 
So until it takes engine damage here. Kind of a shame we didn't see any uh, counter barrage activation here. I believe counter barrage tightens the scatter on the barrage, making it a lot more accurate, a lot more effective in wiping the opponent's artillery. Oh, still playing. He's just going for an old fashioned barrage again. Okay, there's a comet. And that took a whole whole bunch of damage. Damned enemies trying to take a point from us. Oh, it looks like the Yak Panzer went down as well for Yamaru. Too much going on, too many rocket artillery flying every every which direction. Let's take a look at the supplies. Looks like the allies are grinding this one out. With this a tremendous amount of rocket artillery. I think the problem here is the Axis don't really have a, a tank that's super threatening to the Allies right now. So the Allies haven't really had to invest too much into anti-tank. You know, if there was a King Tiger on the field, dishing out wipes, threatening to, you know, to hit the Scots, perhaps they would have to invest in more anti-tank guns. Well, now, now they're actually quite well covered for that as well. The arrival of the Jackson. So things looking very grim for the Axis, they're getting ground out by this tremendous amount of artillery. And I think one of the critical mistakes here was not one player not going for a uh, Spec Ops, not, not using the artillery flares. Over here, 19 kills. So, oh yeah, looks like we got a wipe. Yeah, dearly way I'm missing a rifle squad. Panther with the heat rounds. Bonus penetration, bonus damage. No, Panther goes down. Had to retreat this way or risk taking the uh, anti-tank satchel and the double double tank destroyers get the job done. But crushing blow. Walking Stuka takes down one of the Katushas there. That's one of the strengths of the Walking Stuka. Can quite easily kill a Walking Katusha. Oh god. The squad's getting wiped so easily. Another Katusha in production for Red Terror. We also did use uh, Relief Infantry, but obviously he hasn't taken enough losses to get himself a free squad concert here and it's about to wear off. Cromwell called in for Stern Panther. Could have gone for another comet though. Interesting that he goes to the Cromwell. I 
Oh, this thing, these centaurs have actually been pretty good on this map. A lot of, a lot of like narrow corridors, you know, forcing the troops into like tight clusters to cause this to do a lot of damage. Oh, this could be the end. Stem Tiger Fire and Rocket. No. Does not actually connect. Probably to his surprise as well as mine. But Stem Tiger now in a lot of trouble sandwiched between these two tanks. Here's the King Tiger though. Probably going to save the day. We've got a Panther coming in as well. Fresh Panther. And this Comet's actually probably going to go down now. Because needs to chase, needs to use the heat rounds. Oh no, this is Yamaru's Panther. There's one more penetrating hit. Oh, but it bounces! That's unlucky. I'm not sure why he's disengaging right here, because there's nothing over here to stop him. Perhaps they're trying to stop this tech structure from going down. Yamaru's tech truck taking a lot of damage from the Jackson. Panther. Got an H tank gun there. It's already using the Sabo rounds. Not really necessary against the uh, building. Oh god. There it goes. A bit of rocket artillery with the finish off. Jackson escapes as well. Over there. M1 looks like it's going to go down. Those flames do a lot of damage. So some anti-tank partisans deployed here. Combined up with the SU-85. They go down quite quickly though, but SU-85 doing a lot of damage to the KT. Wow, that rocket artillery just ruining all these squads. One down. Yeah, they are all dead. And this is how it often goes in in uh, these games. Allies just go massive amounts of rocks out to prevent the Axis squads from capping the VPs. Axis try to go for the heavy tanks, and uh, whoever maneuvers them correctly ends up winning. Yeah, you can see, let's look at all their supply. They're about 20 supply ahead across the board. Definitely winning this, uh, definitely winning this war of attrition right now. Need to get some of these tanks killed. He's dead. Is early fetch? No, early fetch is still kicking. 12 kills, V3. Oh no! Stoom Tiger lands a shot on the comet. Panther bounces the killing blow again. That Comet has nine lives. Getting extremely lucky. Good teamwork here. Decrewing his Scott to repair up the Comet. Reserve. 
Reserve Army action, bit of relief infantry again. He's got one squad of conscripts so far. Being upgraded with the PPSH is very strong on this map. Oh man, that was so close to coming the Katusha. And the Comet. Tiger's over here doing a really good job of holding off VP pressure. Oh no, he's run the gauntlet. Looks like he's going to escape, but... King Tiger's now stunned by the tube rockets. This rain over this VP has come to an end. So a lot of neutral VPs, these guys really having trouble really slugging it out for the VPs. Enemy causing trouble, trying to take one of our points. And you can see the strength of PPSH conscripts. Very good close range. Oh no, no squad down. So he's only got like three units, I'm not sure why he couldn't. Get a retreat going there. A capture point is being overrun. Oh, he's building up a pack 43 back here. That's a terrible idea. It's never going to survive all the rocket artillery. Stern Tiger gets a wipe there, stopping that VP from being capped. But the allies do still seem to be, you know, like the army sizes keep creeping up. Whereas the Axis army sizes are stalling out here. Uh oh. Oh, he doesn't have any grenades ticked. <laughs> I was like, oh, that's the engine damage on the path for sure, but no AT grenade tick. Oh, the gammon bomb! Two squads of stern pioneers just got minced there. Oh, that is a massive blow, Yamaru. Poor guy, he's re he rebuilt some instantly, but damage has been done. Gonna drive over to his mech truck, which doesn't actually have the repair on the upgrades, so it's not gonna work. The squad of something just got annihilated. God, the artillery! Oh, look, he didn't even need rocket artillery to take care of the pack 43, he got satcheled. Comet takes care of the uh, the V5 walking Stoker, crushing blow there. Got to be careful in these late game situations. Got to have some minds up. Prevent those kind of maneuvers. And with that, I think the Axis are pretty much out of this game without that walking Stoker. They were really relying on that. Now he's using counter battery. Probably going to be firing at the uh, Scots though. Is, uh, not not that desirable. X is out well and truly on the ropes now.
Weird, those counterbattery shells don't leave a, like, a crater or anything. I don't know if that's on my end or if it's just the ability. There it goes. They've got nothing to stop these pins from coming forward and finishing off the pack 43. This is a massive waste of resources. It's just never going to work out. Probably would have been better going for another LFH, honestly. Anyway, Red Terror has taken some losses. He's got four Katushas, though. That seems to be the bulk of his army. There's one thing the Axis. Uh, I mean, there are no basically no mines for the Allies right now. Since the Axis haven't built up their tank forces enough to actually make any good pushes with their tanks. Okay, there's the King Tiger. He's got two King Tigers and a Panther now. Gotta make sure you don't take damage for free as you get in. As you close the distance here, which is what's happening. S35 just dishing it out to this King Tiger. Forcing it to blitz to safety. This one also taking a lot of damage to all these British tanks. So you can just tanks one at a time. Not sure about this strategy. Let's have two repair pioneers there though. Can do that damage very, very rapidly. God, any squad that tries to go on the cap just gets annihilated. Nexus really are uh, low on squads. Face off against four Katushas. Calliope's and. and the land mattress. Is he gonna lose his last penal squad? Yes. Yeah, the problem with using counter battery, it keeps targeting the Scots. He really needs it to target the uh, Katushas. So he will definitely be better off using the manual barrage, targeting the regions where the Katushas are firing from. Because I think, you know, if it lands a direct hit on a Katusha, I believe these do 160 damage. So it's the exact amount of health for the Katusha. Could one hit them if it lands like a really, like, Perfect dead on shot. Oh no, it's Vet 3 now against the plus 80 damage. That yeah, King Tiger is dead. No way it escapes here. Vet 3 Firefly is truly insane. God, the Axis just can't cap it all. Panther going ham though, going after the Jackson. Now backing away. Bad time to back away. It's gonna die anyway. Get the job done. To take down the Firefly. But, uh. VP's very, very low for the X. Oh, there's that. I didn't see that. There's a fresh pack 43, and that takes care of the Comet. 
Obviously, this pack 43 catching the allies off guard. Look at how much virus he's accumulated. It's just a few seconds of being up. I was wondering how he killed that so fast. Pack 43. Thought maybe it was the Yagpans that did the job, but no, obviously, pack 43 contributed. Getting a lot of damage in. Look at all these flamethrowers coming in now. Open up a few hits on this, and here comes the SRE 5. Try to finish the job on the King Tiger. Pack stolen. SRE 5 just needs one more penetrating hit. Gonna call in the rocket barrage on his own. Pack 43. I think that's a bit unnecessary. If it decrewed it, it might have been able to steal it again. I have to rebuild it. Oh my god, these Calliope is just disgusting. The Axis just have no squads. Nothing left. Been ground down by all this artillery. And that's uh, pretty much what you expect to see. Just the current Axis vs Allies uh, meta. I think, yeah, one of the problems with these kind of kind of games is, you know, if either player tries to go for like ambitious tank play, you run over mines, you end up losing. So you always go for like safe tank play, go for the heavies, try picket range, go for the artillery, so you don't have to try flank the Axis heavies, and this is how the games end up going. Pretty much every time, it does get a bit, uh, bit tiring. Anyway, guys, I'll wrap on that. If you like your game recast by me, details in the video description below. Otherwise, I'll catch you off the next thrilling installment. Goodbye and good luck.